in this video we will solve uh, another packing scenario okay so this time uh, we were given there is no limit on the number of bins we have but the objective is to pack all the items with as fewer bins as possible okay so unlike in the previous two videos where we have constraints on the number of bins or the bin capacity right but in this case we do not have any constraint on the bins but we would like to achieve this with as few bins as possible okay so this time we are taking all the items irrespective of what their value is so that's why value is not important or uh, uh, can be ignored uh, in this problem okay so here we have a few items uh, with their weights okay and we don't have values because it doesn't matter what the value is we want to take all the items this time okay all right uh, we define another dictionary uh, we just uh, 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 have that weights uh, in a dictionary key, va key, key value pairs and then so in the worst case we can have as many bins as the number of items right for example uh, so in this case let's say we have 11 items the simplest solution would be to have 11 boxes or bins so that we can put or pack each item in one bin okay so we start with the worst possible solution and then we try to reduce the number of bins as much as possible so that's why here what we are doing is the data of bins we are setting it equal to the data of items so this item uh, it's a simply an index or this list uh, which goes from uh, 0 to 10 because we have 11 items right so we are initializing 11 bins corresponding to 11 items right so that's the worst uh, solution and then we'll see if we can put more items uh, into each bin so that we can reduce the number of bins or the boxes okay that's the idea all right so then uh, same as before uh, we are using these mixed integer programming and the solver uh, from this uh, library or the implementation all right again uh, exactly same as in the previous video uh, we are going to define this matrix uh, where i represent an item j represent the bin okay so if this value it's a it's a binary or integer value with only zero sign ones okay so in the previous video here we have used solver uh, dot boolean that's one way of using or you can say it's an integer value but it only takes value either zero or one so if for example if this x12 is 0 which means item 1 does not belongs to bin number 2 okay if let's say this is equal to 1 which means item 1 should go into bin number 4 okay that's what xij represents all right now this time uh, we have this uh, obviously additional variable uh, which is the number of bins and which is what we are going to optimize so this bin remember we have defined the number of bins as many as the number of items and here we are saying hey whether i choose this bin or not is a boolean variable or an integer variable with value 0 and 1 so if y2 is 0 which means we are not using bin 2 uh, after optimizing the solution okay if all those y's with value 1 are going to be used for packing the items okay that's what it uh, represents y value all right uh, again so first we need to apply the constraint and this time each item must be in exactly one bin if you recall in the previous video 
at most one bin that means it's not a criteria that we must take all items right because there were capacity constraint but this time we do not have any capacity constraints in terms of number of bins of course each bin has a certain capacity but this time we are taking all the items with us okay we are not left leaving behind any items okay so that's why it says each item must be in exactly one bin whereas in the previous video we said at most one bin okay see uh, it's a very big difference all right so again uh, we are just uh, for a given item we are looping over all the bins so for example let's say we have chosen item number two and we have 11 bins right so bin number zero bin number one all the way up to bin number 10 so we are taking the sum now this sum should be equal to one not less than or equal to one because an item two it must be in one of the bins it should be in one of the bins okay it cannot be in none of the bins all right so that's why it is equal to equal to one not less than or equal to one okay so it's a very big difference all right so we define one constraint and the second one which is obviously on each bin capacity so here we are saying uh, again same as before uh, for a given bin so in this case for example uh, we have chosen number one so for given uh, bin number one uh, we are going over all the items okay so let's say we have some 13 items i think we have some 11 items 10 so this go up to 10 so each item we are going over all the items if that item belongs to that bin one so that value will be one otherwise it is zero so if it does belongs then we are simply taking the weight of that item okay and then we are summing all the weights okay and this value should be less than or equal to uh, the capacity the bin capacity and bin is uh, indexed by this value y uh, one right because it is bin number one so that's what we are doing here so we are checking if an item i belongs to bin j if it does then we are taking the sum of all the items which belongs to bin j and uh, we are adding this constraint that this must be less than uh, the capacity of that bin okay that's the second constraint we have added and coming to the objective as we discussed we started with as many bins as the number of items but our objective is to minimize the number of bins so here what we are doing is again taking the sum uh, with value yj uh, which is also a boolean variable uh, which is also a boolean variable 0 or 1 1 means we are actually using the bin uh, 0 means we are not uh, using the bin so we are taking the sum of all these uh, bins and uh, we want to minimize it okay so we want to minimize the number of bins but we want to carry all the items okay that's what we have done through these two constraints and with this uh, opt uh, sorry objective all right uh, then this part is uh, standard uh, we check if we have reached the optimal solution and then we are going over all the bins and items and uh, then we are checking if item belongs i belongs to bin j uh, then that value will be greater than zero or the actual it is equal to one so we are checking if it is uh, greater than zero which means item i belongs to uh, bin j uh, then we are simply uh, computing some variables temporarily uh, belonging to that bin uh, so that the weights can become uh, we know the total weight uh, of that bin right and printing some stuff all right so it says uh, the 10 uh, the 11 i think the 11 items can be packed in four bins so bin zero it's going to have these three items uh, the total weight 97 bin two tot again another three items with weight 99 so bin 
3 or index 2 is going to contain only two items and the weight is 84 and finally the final bin contain three items with the weight 90 okay so the total number of you bins used is four all right so coming here if we want to pack all these items in bins of maximum capacity 100 we need a minimum of four bins okay no matter what permutations combinations you do if we want to group these into subgroups of some less than or equal to 100 we need a minimum of four subgroups okay and each group is a bin okay all right so that's how we can optimize the number of bins uh, we can take uh, while not leaving any items behind uh, that's all for this video thank you very much